alpha receptor agonist and antagonist. The alpha receptor agonist and antagonist may be alpha 1 selective, alpha 2 selective, non selective alpha 1, alpha 2, and non selective alpha beta receptors. Now, selective alpha 1 agonist, the mnemonics is PPM, parts per million phenylephrine, pseudoephedrine, and methoxamine. The alpha-1 agonists, what are the uses? They are used in hypotension, hemostasis, and nasal congestion. So what are the effects of alpha-1 agonists? Alpha-1 agonists, like phenylephrine, primarily act on vascular smooth muscle, causing vasoconstriction, so they increase the blood pressure. They increase the peripheral vascular resistance, increase venous return, increase arterial and diastolic blood pressure, but they cause reflex bradycardia. They increase the glycogenolysis and decrease the renin release. So alpha-1 agonist stimulation will cause vasoconstriction, increased peripheral resistance and increase in blood pressure increased glycogenolysis. The only function that is decreased by alpha-1 agonist is that of the renin release. Selective alpha-1 antagonists or alpha-1 blockers. What do they do? They decrease the peripheral resistance and decrease the blood pressure opposite to that of alpha-1 agonists and they do this by dilating both the resistance and the capacitance vessel arteries and veins. So what are the examples of alpha-1 antagonists? Mnemonics is DPT, doxazosine, trazosine and terazosine. Trazosine is the alpha-1 antagonist that decreases the blood pressure by dilating both resistance and capacitance vessels as I already told. So what's the side effect of trazosine? There is a first dose postural hypotension that may cause myocardial infarction and stroke and the other side effect is nasal stuffiness. Prazosin is also used in vasospastic Berger's disease causing vasodilatation. Now alpha-2 agonists and antagonists. Selective alpha-2 agonists. They inhibit T sympathetic center in the brain stem. So they are sympatholytics. So alpha-2 agonists examples are clonidine, catapress, alpha-methyldopa, aldomet, reserpine and guanfacine. So we just did the alpha-2 receptor stimulation action that they decrease everything, decrease the blood pressure, lipolysis, insulin secretion for example. So alpha-2 receptor stimulation will suppress the release of noradrenaline. So they decrease the peripheral resistance and decrease the blood pressure. They are used in the treatment of number one, hypertension. And number two, they are also used in ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorders. The centrally acting alpha-2 agonists are used in autonomic neuropathy that occur due to baroreceptor denervation. Alpha-2 agonists cause meiosis, so they are used in glaucoma. Uh, remember, alpha-1 causes pupillary dilatation, whereas alpha-2 stimulation or agonists cause meiosis, so used in glaucoma. Alpha-2 agonists on withdrawal, they may produce rebound hypertension. Because normally they produced hypotension, so they are used in hypertension, but withdrawal of alpha-2 agonists, clonidine, may cause rebound hypertension. Selective alpha-2 antagonist. Example is yohimbine and mirtazepine. Yohimbine is used in postural hypotension. Now non-selective alpha-1 and alpha-2 blockers. Formula is PPT, parts per trillion or PPT. Phentolamine, regitin, phenoxybenzamine, which has a slow prolonged duration of action. Phenoxybenzamine, slow prolonged duration of action. And number three is tolazoline, priscoline. So the alpha-1 and 2 blockers combined, non-selective alpha-1 and alpha-2 blockers are phentolamine, phenoxybenzamine and tolazoline, priscoline. The non-selective alpha-1 and alpha-2 blockers are primarily used in pheochromocytoma. Now, non-selective alpha-beta blockers, they block both alpha and beta receptors. Examples are labetalol and carvedilol.